very good evening everyone uh thank you for joining our talk on multi agent deep reinforcement learning for competitive and cooperative autonomous vehicles using auto drive ecosystem so let us start a little bit about the research motivation so reinforcement learning as we all might be aware of is the concept of learning through experience but the challenge becomes quite difficult when we move from just reinforcement learning to multi agent reinforcement learning wherein the scenarios are now highly complex and dynamic there is a lot of stochasticity involved in the scenario and even in multi agent reinforcement learning the overall objective of these agents could be either competitive or cooperative or both of them simultaneously so in the context of autonomous vehicles uh, cooperation could be something like traversing an intersection safely uh, which is predominantly utilized in the autonomous driving or intelligent transportation systems or it could be competitive such as head to head autonomous racing as shown there and there could be also a possibility of having competition and cooperation simultaneously for example if we consider a head to head autonomous racing event the although the overall objective is to compete against each other these agents should also cooperate with uh, with each other to ensure that there is no collision with uh, between the two agents uh, we leveraged uh, what we developed and what we call auto drive ecosystem to model and implement uh, this multi agent reinforcement learning framework so just to give you or introduce you to uh, auto drive it basically is uh, comprises of adaptkit that is a collection of flexible apis and tools to develop autonomous driving as well as uh, smart city applications we have a high fidelity simulation system that can be used for virtual prototyping digital twin applications for basically uh, using variability analysis and doing rigorous uh, verification and validation of your autonomy algorithm at an earlier stage and finally a uh, hardware test bed for physical or hybrid validation of uh, the problem at hand so let us talk a little bit about the creation of the digital twin models uh, for the reinforcement learning task we have modeled two different vehicles one is nigel which is the native vehicle of auto drive ecosystem that we started off with which is the one, one is to 14 scale ackerman steered vehicle uh, it's basically targeted towards autonomous driving and intelligent transportation using v2x communication and things like that and recently uh, what we have done is we have also brought in the f110 vehicle which is a one is to 10 scale vehicle uh, targeted towards autonomous racing operational design domain and we have now uh, set up these both and other vehicles full scale vehicles in a digital twinning framework uh, with respect to with uh, giving good amount of thought uh, on the dynamics as well as perception interfaces for uh, ensuring uh, higher simulation fidelity to talk about dynamics interface uh, the vehicle is uh, are represented as a combination of sprung and digital body uh, representations and at uh, these two interfaces are connected using the mass uh, moment of inertia and center of mass uh, parameters we have modeled the suspension dynamics as uh, mass spring damper systems and the tire dynamics are modeled as two sp two piece splines to ensure uh, lateral as well as longitudinal slip uh, profile co correlation with respect to the tire forces and these uh, together in combination with the actuator dynamics uh, that also include the saturation limits as well as the dead bands of each of these actuators uh, ensure proper Ackermann steer uh, vehicle dynamics for both the upland dynamics as well as vertical dynamics. For the perception, we have throttle and uh, steering feedbacks that are actually measured from the dynamically simulated uh, throttle and steering actuators. In addition to that, we have indoor positioning system and inertial measurement units that utilize the temporal co temporally coherent data of rigid body transforms of the vehicle with respect to the uh, world frame or inertial frame of reference to update the position, orientation, linear uh, velocity, angular velocity, as well as the accelerations. And we also have modeled the incremental encoders based on the uh, the drive actuators, the wheel radius, as well as the deformation that happens on uh, uh, the tires as well as the uh, resolution of these encoders we have lidar that uses active recasting methodology to ensure uh, the uh, range the linear and angular range as well as the resolution and update rate of the lidar is matched with respect to its physical counterpart and for cameras we use a uh, viewport rendering uh, pipeline which basically utilizes the uh, rigid body transformation of the camera frame with respect to world and a perspective projection matrix to uh, utilize parameters such as the focal length, the aspect ratio of the uh, sensor, as well as the uh, sensor offsets across each dimension to render uh, the camera images. 
And in addition to that baseline uh, we, a model, we also have post-processing scripts that take care of other nonlinear effects such as uh, uh, such as distortion or chromatic aberration or ambient occlusion and things like that. So let us now talk a little bit about the two different case studies that we have implemented using this uh, ecosystem. So the first case study is that of uh, a cooperative scenario where we use the application as an intersection traversal. And the problem formulation for this is based upon a partially observable Markov decision processes where each of the agents is only aware of limited states of uh, its peers and there is no active perception involved uh, directly. So the observation space here uh, consists of the relative goal of uh, each agent with respect to itself. Uh, the relative peer poses, uh, as well as the absolute peer velocities, which are now communicated using a V2V uh, communication framework and estimated using the encoders on the wheels. In terms of action spaces, uh, the vehicle throttle is capped at 80% and the agent is now choosing discrete action commands for steering the vehicle in uh, either of the directions, as well as uh, moving straight if required. And we formulated the reward, uh, of course, to now give uh, Award after uh, crossing the intersection safely, but instead of just giving a constant uh, penalty uh, upon collision, we are now also adding a gain, which is the distance from the goal that the agent collided. And the ideology behind that formulation was to push the agent towards the goal, no matter if it didn't reach the goal initially, and basically guide it towards the goal. And uh, here we are using a pure reinforcement learning framework to now update the policies. And we have two different scenarios, a single agent learning scenario, where only one agent is learning. And then we transition towards a multi-agent learning scenario where all the agents were learning simultaneously to cross the intersection. So, uh, we parallelize the training, uh, here in case, in this case, using multiple environments. And here, as you can see in this video, we have 25 parallel environments running, uh, four agents each, which uh, com totally comprises of hundred agents learning in parallel, uh, the same task of intersection traversal. Uh, and we analyze the training in terms of the curia, uh, cumulative reward that the agents are uh, accumulating over the episode, the episode length itself, as well as the policy entropy. And uh, here in the first, first column, uh, we have the results for the single agent learning scenario. And in the second column, we have the results for multi-agent learning scenario. And although the profiles of both the columns look the same, the, re the primary reason for the difference or uh, high deviation in the second second case is because of the high, higher stochasticity of the environments where all the agents were le learning to uh, cross the intersection simultaneously. Uh, of course, at the end, we were able to train the agents to traverse the intersection safely. Uh, in the single agent learning scenario, it is interesting that depending on the velocities of its peers, the ego agent, which is now traversing from the bottom to the top, actually learn to choose either the left or the right lane of the other end of the intersection uh, to uh, mitigate or avoid the collision uh, that would happen with the agent that's primarily coming from the right or the left side. And in the uh, multi-agent learning scenario, similarly, you can see that all, all the agents have now learned uh, after the training to uh, traverse the intersection safely, uh, you, like without colliding with each other or overstepping any of the lane bounds. So, I'll now talk about the competitive case study, which is of autonomous racing. So here again, we formulated uh, the problem as a POMDP with no state sharing this time, because being a competitive scenario, the, the agents uh, were not allowed to share any of the state informations with each other. The only uh, observations that each of the agents could have was its own velocity, as well as li sparse LIDAR scan uh, uh, of 27 points, 10 degrees apart uh, as the physical F1 length vehicle. And in terms of the action space here, the agents were allowed to control both the throttle as well as the steering of the vehicle in order to uh, drive or race. And here, instead of formulating it as a uh, naive RL problem, we formulated it as a guided RL problem with uh, demonstrations to guide the RL agent in two different ways. One is using behavioral cloning, which was weighed equally as the RL updates. And secondarily, using Gale or generative adversary limitation learning reward which basically ask the RL agent to be as close to the demonstrations as possible while also maximizing other sets of rewards. And these other sets of rewards comprised of a curiosity reward, which guided the uh, agent to e explore initially 
and uh, basically promoting different action outcomes for the same observations. And it was decayed exponentially uh, as the training episodes progress to now promote exploitation towards the other, like other half of the uh, training. And apart from this, we also had a extrinsic reward formulation as uh, mentioned towards the bottom of the uh, central column where the agents were of course uh, penalized upon collision, but they were guided through different checkpoints, which uh, gave them smaller rewards and a higher reward towards the lab completion. And uh, if the agent could possibly overcome its own lap time or beat the other agents lap time, it was uh, rewarded significantly. And uh, otherwise, uh, uh, we, we uh, awarded the agent proportional to its velocity to now come up with a reward formulation, which maximize the velocity and minimize the time uh, of lab completion. So here uh, we trained only for multi-agent learning scenario because that was kind of uh, depending on the application that was the whole uh, crux of it. And here we parallelize the training in a different way where you have a single environment, meaning the racetrack, but there are multiple agents uh, being uh, trained parallelly in the same environment. And if you see uh, only the agents of a single family, which means two uh, agents at a time are able to collide, observe or interact with each other in any form. So if you look closely, the LIDAR recast that the eco vehicle is uh, currently visualized for is only hitting either the track bounds or its true competitor and none of the other agents that are learning in parallel. And similarly, if you see in the heads up display, uh, the camera preview of the ego uh, of the ego agent is being visualized where it only uh, sees its true competitor and none of the other uh, agents that are learning in parallel. Uh, again, we uh, analyze this training in terms of the behavioral cloning loss, uh, which uh, exponentially reduced over time. Uh, Gale reward, which for one of the agents uh, started off pretty well, which means that it was uh, primarily um, uh, acting more towards the demonstrations provided, but then reduced, which means that it learned to explore and settle at a different uh, behavior. And as well as curiosity reward, which uh, both of the agents have uh, maximized and uh, the episode length, as well as the policy entropy, which has been converged, meaning the agents are most certain with their action uh, based on a particular observation. So uh, apart from completing several laps, the agents also did some interesting maneuvers or strategies to overtake each other. And here are just two sample ca use cases or uh, two points in the deployment phase where we observed really cool overtaking strategies. So for example, in the first video on the left side, you have a block block overtake uh, strategy where the red agent keeps blocking the blue agent uh, throughout the straight, but because it's on the inner side of the track, it compromises the turn uh, and has to slow down there where the blue agent quickly overtakes it and gains a leading position. On the right, uh, you have a more interesting maneuver where the uh, red agent now, because it's, it knows that it, it would compromise the uh, lap if it would go through the shorter curve, it goes wide, lets the blue agent overtake it. And because the blue agent now comes closer to the uh, boundary of the racetrack, it slows down and then the red agent finds the gap and just overtakes it right there and gains the leading position again. So thank you very much for your attention. And here are a few resources that will take you to the auto drive ecosystem, uh, uh, open source uh, resources in general, and we would be happy to answer any questions at this point.